The American Cancer Society estimates that over 96,000 new cases of colon cancer will be diagnosed this year. There are several methods used, including colonoscopies. Today we'll meet Brian, who has had a family history of colon cancer. Watch as he gets tested here on The Younger You. Keep going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to the show. Today on The Young You, we're talking about colon cancer. March has been a colon cancer awareness month since 2000. It has become a time when thousands of patients, doctors and advocates come together to spread colon cancer awareness. So three days before your colonoscopy, we have patients stop uh, eating whole pieces of fiber. So seeds and nuts, um, beans, corn, anything like that that could end up as debris uh, when we're going to do the procedure a couple days later and couldn't interfere with visualization. Two days before the procedure, we have people eat a normal dinner and then at about 7 p.m. start a clear liquid diet that they'll continue until they have their colonoscopy. Anything from broth, uh, coffee counts, soda, um, clear juices like apple juice, Gatorade. And then the day before the procedure, we have people on a clear liquid diet all day. Um, and then they usually start uh, their prep with some laxative tablets in the afternoon and drinking Miralax and Gatorade in the evening. The following footage contains actual medical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. So we're here at the Wasatch Endoscopy Center on St. Mark's campus. We don't get to see this often. We're going to go in and see Brian's colonoscopy. We're going to go in and meet Dr. Maxwell and get started. Okay, so what's the procedure like for Brian today? In, in a minute, Brian's going to turn on his left uh, and he's going to pull his legs up kind of like he's sitting in a chair. Uh, we're going to talk to him, make sure he's comfortable, and then we're going to give him medicine in his IV that's going to make him go mostly to sleep. This is not general anesthesia. Yeah. You breathe on your own during the procedure, uh, he'll, it, but he'll be very comfortable. Good, good. What type of equipment do you use? Uh, these are new high-def scopes that have become kind of the industry standard over the last uh, maybe over the last five years, and they're fantastic. The, the, the procedure itself involves putting the scope in his bottom and going around his colon from one end to the other, about like that, inflating with air and coming back out, inspecting the mucosa, Great. looking for abnormalities. The colon cancer screening, I would say, is a little bit like doing a skin exam, but on the inside and looking for moles, you know, and, and, and removing the ones that are funny. So a polyp is an abnormal growth on the inside of the colon. Almost all of them we can remove right through the scope and, and, and pull out if okay. we find them. And besides polyps, what else are you looking for during this procedure? So mostly it's going to be polyps. Now, every now and then we find cancer, uh, you know, a polyp that has progressed past the polyp stage to cancer. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping, obviously, not to find that. We'd much rather find polyps and cut them out so they can't become cancer. We also do colonoscopy. Uh, looking for inflammatory bowel disease like yeah. ulcerative colitis or Crohn's yeah. disease or for diverticular disease, you know, following up after diverticulitis or, or for pain or otherwise. Yeah. Brian, you ready to get sedated here? I am, thanks. Okay, we'll leave the rest up to Dr. Maxwell. All Very right. good. Alrighty. We'll take good care of you, Brian. Thank you. All right, can we start sedating, Barb? This is the part that makes people not want to do colonoscopy. Uh, nobody likes uh, having a, a doctor they barely know put instruments in their bottom. He, he won't remember any of this. He'll be very, very comfortable the whole time. So starting the exam, this is the beginning of Brian's rectum on the way out. So I'm adding air and water to, to Brian's colon. So why water and air? So I add water uh, both to clean and, and to lubricate the scope. Yeah. And then the air, I add the air so that I can see the inside of the colon. And so the first part, we're just getting to the other side of the colon. Last part is really the exam where we're trying to exit is where we really find polyps and abnormalities and all that stuff. Exactly well. right. And so we're through the, the twisty part of his colon. I'm washing as I go, a little bit of debris, but all in all, very, very cleaned out. So the scope has a water jet and, uh, and a suction port on it that let us clean up anything that's left. You can see he's got a very good prep, just minimal little debris that easily sucks into the scope. So he's to be commended for his efforts. Now we're going to start the uh, inspection part of the exam where we look at the mucosa of his colon. Once I feel like I've seen everything under his valve here and otherwise, I'm going to turn the scope around and look at the backs of some of these folds. And that's where some polyps can actually hide. Now that you see that folding there. Exactly. So well, now you looks can see. Good. Looks yeah, good. isn't that neat? We can see where we came from. That's the scope. The end of it is turned around like a candy cane and looking back at itself. Wow. 
So I can come back here and look at the backs of all these folds, looking for those flat polyps or any other polyps. The rest of this procedure will, will look a lot like this, where I look around the inside of each fold uh, for any abnormalities. Polyps can be little or big, and they can hide uh, behind any of these. I actually just found a little polyp. And so you can see right at the 3 o'clock position, there's a little bump. Oh, yeah. Yep. And so these are biopsy forceps, and we're going to go in with these through the scope and, and grab that polyp in one bite. So there's the forceps coming out the other end. Open, yeah. please. So I'm getting a good look of where we were. Close. So you can see there's a little wow. crater left where that was, that and it's gone Fascinating. Now. She just ripped the polyp off. Like yeah, that. well, and it looked like a rip, but really the jaws of the forceps are like a razor, and so it's a clean cut. Yeah. There's nothing left, and we can look back where we were and make sure that I didn't miss anything, and there's a little crater left where it was. He won't feel that at all. Okay. Uh, he didn't have any pain when we did it. So now that you've taken off the polyp, what happens then? So that polyp will go to a pathologist. Mark put it in a bottle, and the pathologist will section it and stain it, and they'll tell us what the polyp was. Was it a, a precancerous polyp, like an adenoma? It could be a lymphoid aggregate, just a, a group of limb cells, or a, a reactive or inflammatory polyp. Most polyps fall into one of those categories, and then based on that, we'll decide uh, when he needs another colonoscopy. There's a little mucosal abnormality here. I think we'll go ahead and take it off. It's unlikely to be anything big, uh, but we're here already. So I can't tell the difference, you know, looking, looking at it through the screen, I can't tell what it's going to be. Yeah. And so I, when I take it off, uh, you know, I take it off for the pathologist to make the, make the decision. Okay. Open, please. Close. Thank you. Have that. We're down into the sigmoid colon now, and I'm suctioning out the little bit of liquid that's left here. Uh, well, I go back and forth inspecting for changes, but everything looks great. He's done great. He's breathed very well. His oxygen saturation's been perfect. His blood pressure looks good. He's had a really easy procedure. We're just about done. Actually, there's another polyp. Yeah. Let's see. Open, please. So the goal here has got to be to get that out in one fell swoop. Close. Good. How long does it take you to get that good? The colonoscopy is actually somehow a lot harder than it looks. That part where you take out the polyps, that, that's, that part's kind of like playing video games. The hard part is getting in and getting all the way around with the scope in short position Yeah. Um, so that you can do a good exam on the way out. And that took a long time. That took you know, probably a couple thousand procedures before I felt really, really comfortable. All right, we're at the very end now, looking at, through the, the remainder of his rectum and everything looks great. So now I've turned the scope around. This is called retroflexion again in the rectum. Looking at the way out to make sure that there are no bad hemorrhoid disease or, or anal cancer or anything like that, and this all looks great. And we're all done. I'm gonna suck out a little bit of air for Brian's comfort. And that's it. All right, so Dr. Maxwell was done. We found a couple polyps. Um, you'll send them off to pathology, now what else will you do there? Right, so, so this, that was a very typical colonoscopy. Brian had an easy time. Uh, we found a few little polyps. I don't know uh, what the polyps will be, so we send them to the pathologist. Who, uh, who again will look at them under the microscope and, and decide um, uh, do they have any precancerous potential and based on that information um, I'll turn that around and, and talk to Brian about uh, when he needs another colonoscopy. Dr. Maxwell, look forward to seeing you when we're back in town. Thank you very much. Alrighty. Take care. Thanks for watching. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and we'll see you next week.